just like the torque angular momentum also is an axial vector it can also be split into the components along the respective axis the angular momentum about an axis say angular momentum is l about the x axis it is lx about y axis its component is ly about z axis its component is lz if you add these three components just like the components of the ordinary vector you are getting the net angular momentum so angular momentum can be split can be divided into three components lx ly and lz are the components of angular momentum along or about the axis x y and z axis respectively when you take the angular momentum of the particle with respect to the reference point let the reference point have the coordinates x1 y1 and z1 and coordinates of this point mass with respect to the reference point that be x2 comma y2 comma z2 and the linear momentum be mv can be split into components mvx i kf plus mvyj kf plus mvz kf the position vector can be written as x2 minus x1 i kf plus y2 minus y1 j kf plus z2 minus z1 k kf just like the expression for the torque what you did in the last section you can write it x2 minus x1 is del x y2 minus y1 is del y z2 minus z1 is del z and the linear momentum mvx i cap plus mvy j cap plus mvz k cap or you can just write here this is the component of the linear momentum along x direction px i cap this is the component of the linear momentum along y direction py this is the component of the linear momentum along z direction that is pz k cap one should know both the position and the linear momentum the angular momentum of the particle about o is given as l is equal to r cross p in tabulated form i kf j kf k kf its x component del x so i component del y its z component del z its x component px its y component py its z component pz when you expand the determinant we are getting i kf into del y into pz minus py into del z minus j kf 
del x into p z minus p x into del z plus k k f del x into p y minus p x into del y. So, we are getting three components. This is the x component, this is l x, this is the y component, this is l y and this is the z component, this is l z. And when you add these three components, we are getting the angular momentum net measured with respect to the given point, reference point. Therefore, the angular momentum about a point can be written as the sum of angular momentum components about or along the respective axis. So, angular momentum about an axis may be be a component of angular momentum about a point. Let me support this through an example. Well, let us take an example of a block which moves to the velocity v and you are standing here. You are standing at the origin. This is the position vector of the block. The block is at a height of h with respect to the origin. Mass of the block is m. Find angular momentum of the point mass p about O. Find the component of the angular momentum of this point mass with respect to O along x direction, along y direction and along z direction. To solve this problem, let us use the basic formula for the angular momentum of this point mass about this point O is equal to r cross m v. This is r factor, this is m v factor. The angle between these two vectors is theta. So, we can write r m v sin theta r cross m v since the angle moves in clockwise sense, the angular momentum of this point mass with respect to this reference point must be clockwise. Here r sin theta can be written as h height of the block with respect to the origin m v into h. In minus k cap direction. So, the entire angular momentum vector is directed along negative, x, negative z direction. Therefore, along x direction, its component is 0, along y direction, its component is 0 and along z direction, the component is m v into h. So, angular momentum about an axis may be a component, here it can be a component or here it is a component. Angular momentum 
of the block about this point is entirely directed along negative z direction. So, angular momentum about an axis in this case is the angular momentum about this point O. Angular momentum about any point can be equal to angular momentum about an axis. In some special cases as shown in this given example. The next context is angular momentum and the torque. We have to extend this idea for the group of particles. Before doing that, we need to clarify the basic meaning, the physical meaning of angular momentum and torque. And there, interdependence. Torque is the cause of change of angular momentum. When a particle experiences a net torque, its angular momentum changes. So, torque is equal to change of angular momentum with respect to time. Torque is equal to rate of change of angular momentum. It is equivalent to the case of the linear analog. Force is equal to rate of change of linear momentum. So, we can write F is equal to time derivative of the linear momentum and torque is equal to the time derivative of angular momentum about any point. If you take the torque, that must be equated with the time derivative of a rate of change of the angular momentum taken with respect to that same point. This can be written as the sum of the components. This torque about O can be written as torque about x axis plus torque about y axis plus torque about z axis. This can be written as time derivative of angular momentum about x axis, about y axis, about z axis in summation form. Generally, some cases or in general, we can equate the torque about any axis as, a, as the time derivative of change of angular momentum about that axis. Torque about x axis is equal to time derivative of angular momentum about that axis. Torque about y axis is equal to the time derivative of the angular momentum about y axis and torque about z axis is equal to time derivative of a rate of change of the angular momentum about z axis. This is a general view. However, through some examples, we can clear it and some finer points we need to deduce by taking some suitable examples. So, here the context is a relation between torque and angular momentum. Whenever angular momentum changes, the particle must experience a torque. So, this is the equation. Torque about any point will be equal to 
rate of change of angular momentum about that point. We need to verify this formula by taking suitable examples. The example number one is the falling man mango with velocity v and at the same time it experiences a downward pull of earth. When it falls freely, when you release it from rest, it falls freely. It falls vertically down. So the line of motion and line of action both are same. Line of motion is given by the velocity and line of action is given by the force. Both the lines are same. This is the R vector and uh, let it be B is a constant quantity. The angle between R vector and Mg vector is theta. Let us verify this formula tau O is equal to R cross Mg and already you have calculated that this is Mg into B which direction minus k cap direction proved earlier. This is the left hand side. The right hand side if you take angular momentum about this origin of this mango can be written as R cross MB. The angle between MV vector and R vector also is theta in this particular problem. In this particular example, in both the cases, the angle remains the same, that is theta, Rmv sin theta. R sin theta in which direction? Minus k cap direction. Or clockwise, both angular momentum and the torque, both are pointing in clockwise sense or in negative, x, negative z direction is equal to m v r sin theta can be written as b minus k f. You take the derivative of this angular momentum with respect to time. You are getting all these are constant quantity take them out of the derivative and rate of change of the speed is equal to the magnitude of gravitational acceleration. I can write minus mgb into k cap and that is none other than the torque experienced by the particle with respect to the given point is equal to tau o. Hence, left hand side is equal to right hand side. So, in this example, verify the formula tau o is equal to rate of change of L o and we have verified it.